to you. So I, I'm City Dave. Yeah. I'm the one you've been talking to, Terry, for the last Yeah, week. great, this great, is, great. This is uh, our uh, MIB founder, uh, Mr. Mr. Tom Brunt. How are we doing, Terry? Hey, okay, Tom. buddy? How? I'm good, Tom. I like all the shirts at the back you've got there. You've got a good collection, no? I think I think you've worn one or two of these in the past, pal. Not personally, but they, uh, they, they go right yeah. round. So it's always good. Yeah, brilliant. Brilliant. That's it's nice. Funny, it's it's funny, isn't it? Do you, do, you wear, do you ever keep any of your shirts? All my shirts. I tell you something, I give a lot of them away. There was a few probably I left here, there and everywhere. I, I just keep the special ones. The special yeah. ones which have the sentimental ones. A lot of them I give away. A lot of them I've lost. A lot of them because all all me moving around all yeah, over the world. Yeah. And I've left there, left there. I've left that friends' houses, and you know, it, it, be, to be fair, when you're travelling all over, they just become a pain in the backside. Yeah, sometimes you know, and, and 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 they start to smell and that. But I've I've kept the special ones. You know, the special ones I've I give an awful lot away. Yeah, you know, uh, especially personal shirts. I've given a lot of them away. Uh, Shirts what I've swapped, then, you know, back in the day, don't forget, they had no names on the back. You know, and we was playing at the Nationals against, like, Lithuania, Latvia. They had no names, they just had a number on there. So, you know, uh, but I give a lot, I give a lot of shirts away, a lot of Man City shirts, Chelsea shirts, I give to charities and, you know, yeah, I just or, things or, like that, you know. Yeah, yeah. auctions, you know. Uh, I give, I give, a, I remember me, when I come back from the 94 World Cup, uh, it was a screen school auction and I, I you know I'd give them the everything there and I, I'd wore it against Mexico the shirt I wore against Mexico and I'd, I'd give it the principal and, and she went well that's not going to be worth anything I said I've just played just yeah. played in the World Cup I've just played in the World Cup with that you know yeah. get it all leave it to the last to get it auctioned the auction did first and it raised about 50 quid oh. <laughs> you know I was gutted I was absolutely gutted but there you go you know, you, you, you know your uh, you know your second fiddle when a uh, a box of roses outbeats your World Cup playing shirt, don't it? There you go. I was, you know, what? I, I still think about. I, I, I was, I think it was, a, yeah, it was against Mexico. Did we wear white or green? It was one or two anyway, uh, or Holland. It was, it was one or two. But I ended up giving it to the end, and I was really, I was really a bit surprised. I was really gutted to tell you the truth, because it could have went, it, you know, it could have went to somewhere, you know, a bit more. Who needed it a bit more to tell you the yeah. truth? Someone, you know, someone's, got that, someone's got that in their loft, you know, now. It's, it's, in, it's, it's in a suitcase in the loft somewhere. It pro probably is. It's probably about someone's wearing it round playing footy, playing footy somewhere. You, you wouldn't know, oh, you know. Uh, but there you go, anyway. There you oh, go. Well, well, listen. Thanks so much for coming on, Terry. Really, really appreciate it. No problem. It. It's funny yeah. when you, no. when you, when you, like, me, me growing up, uh, watching City at Main Road, seeing you play, it's it's fantastic to talk to you face to face. And it's and as you're doing research to try and get all the stats and figures, it's for just saying to Dave a minute ago, type Terry Feeling into Google and straight away it's like Terry Feeling goal, Terry Feeling Spurs. And I think Dave's done, done yeah. a, bit of a homage to you in the background yeah. there. That's the start of your run, Terry, right there behind me. <laughs> Yeah, I was probably probably about twenty yards back and all when I picked yeah. that up. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Did you mean to, was, that, was, that, was that a rush of blood to the head moment? Or did you think, Do you know what, I'm having this. You know what, I was having this and I was just pissed off. <laughs> I was really pissed off because let's be honest, I think boys, we we had a good team then. I think we finished around about sixth or seventh in the league around that yeah. that, uh, that, uh, that that time, uh, and we was like. Are we really going to do this? Is our name on the cup this year? And we went one nil up. We was cruising the game the first half. The game was and the fans was brilliant. There was an atmosphere. There was a there was a taste that hey, this could be our year that we could actually win a trophy. And uh, we went in at half time. We come out and it just fell to pieces. I think uh, we had a couple of mistakes at the back. It happened, and uh, it just seemed to it just seemed to have fell to pieces. We just didn't get our rhythm going again. And I would I wouldn't mind, but. Spurs wasn't particularly good. I think we gave them two goals. Yeah, I do you know? remember that. It's bizarre. Remember. Well, we're, we're, yeah, I'm going to try and take you back in time to when you when you first started with us because we're kind of we're kind of doing yeah. this from your, from your start to your to your yeah. and I really want to ask you about what you're doing now because that's really interesting. But I'll save that okay. to the end if that's all right. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. 
So, you, listen, you, you, you transferred to us from, from the crazy gang from Wimbledon. That must have been an experience, and that must be a, a separate podcast itself with some of the stories you've got. <laughs> right, you oh, know. yeah. You, you, you'd, be, you'd, you'd be there for... I was there for five years. You'd probably be... I'm probably talking for ten years about them lot, but you know, I, 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 I'm going I'm to really tell you something. They was like... All them lads who, 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 who I grew up with then, I mean, it was only 20 years, 21 years of age, 20 years of age. And, you know, I'd, I'd done my bit at Leeds, played 25 times for Leeds, uh, league and club games. And then I went to Swansea. I did my bit at Swansea, which was fantastic down in Swansea. And I'll always, I'll always hold the fans with high regard down at Swansea because that's where I think, you know, I needed to get away and, and get it done. But when I went to uh, Wimbledon, it took me six months just to sort of like, bed in what was going on around me. Now, these, these players was a lot of crazy players in, in a right way. You know, in a right way, there was fun. There was uh, nothing could ever deter them. You know, they had that resilience and determination. But when you walked into the, uh, the dressing room, you, knew, you never knew what was going to happen. You know, so fantastic, uh, fantastic, fantastic atmosphere we had. Uh, some wonderful players who went on to bigger and better things and got sold for an hell of a lot of money. Uh, yeah, so so for me, I mean, I think we'd all done our time, you know, uh, being at Wimbledon for five years and then you're looking at bigger bigger pitches, your bigger clubs, your bigger fans. Uh, and for me, there was a few clubs who come in and the last minute Manchester City come in. Don't forget, I was a Manchester City fan and I know a lot of Man City uh, supporters don't believe that. My first shirt I got given from the next door neighbours and it was a Man City shirt. Could you imagine that in the depths of Salford in Lower Broughton? <laughs> oh, nice. Uh, no, wonder, no wonder I was quick. Eh? <laughs> 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 so, oh. so, you know, I, but I, I wore it with pride. I wore it with pride. I, I actually wore it with pride. And, and it, was, it was the first shirt, the first football shirt I ever, I ever got. And I wore it with pride. So, you know... Uh, but growing up then in, the, in them days, Liverpool was always on the TV. You know, we couldn't really afford to go down to Main Road and, uh, and watch City. Uh, so it was at any time I could catch them on the TV. I caught them on the TV, but I still wore the blue shirt, no so matter when, where I went. That's amazing, that. I, 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 didn't, I didn't actually know that. So you, you've told me something. Yeah, so when, when, yeah. when you were growing up, which City players, when, when you were growing up and getting involved in football and, you know, you get into that stage of your life where you thought, you know, I could make a career of this. Yeah, who were yeah. Your, who I, your inspirations while you were, while you were watching football. I remember. City? I remember uh, going on a trip with my brother, and he was a Madman United fan. He could have ended up playing for Manchester United. Uh, and I remember going on a trip, and we went to Main Road, and you know, your Joe Corrigan's was there, your Tommy Boogs was there, and I think it was Dennis Stewart what what got me, and Peter Barnes, Dennis Stewart and Peter Barnes, they what seemed to have grabbed me my attention. But it was more or less Dennis Stewart uh, more than anything. And, you know, I, I'll tell you a great story. I remember being sat, 93, in the, in the change rooms, I was 94, and he comes in, he goes, Sir Terry, is there any chance I can have your autograph? And I'm looking, at, I'm, I'm sat there, and I'm looking at a legend of Manchester City, Dennis Stewart, and I'm thinking, Sir, you really want my, my autograph? He went, oh yeah, my son's your favourite. And, and I'm like, wow, so, you know, these dreams do come, come true. So I had a great opportunity to sign for Manchester City at 12 years of age, believe it or not. Uh, Ken Barnes, Ken Barnes was a chief scout. And I think it was Peter Barnes. Uh, uh, yeah, I remember. Uh, he actually come to the house and said, look, there's a four-year there's a four year contract. Uh, we want you to sign for Manchester City. But then Manchester City was buying players at a million quid. Uh, I think it was Steve Daly. They brought Trevor Francis was coming in. And I'm thinking, am I ever going to get a chance in that side? You know, and then Leeds come in and all, and Everton, Man United. There was a whole load of clubs. And so I ended up going to Leeds for the wrong reason. My friend, he was joining Leeds. He was a Manchester lad. And it was, it was a little bit of, a, you know, a normality for me. You know, I've got somebody else from Manchester there uh, at Leeds. But it was an Asian side and all. And he was in the old second division. So I thought, 16, 17, I'm going to be playing in the reserves. I played in reserves at 14 and now 15. And then I submitted myself in the first team at 17 years of age. So it was, in the end, it was a good move uh, for me. Were you always a defender as a kid growing up? No, no. I played uh, left midfield, centre midfield uh, and left wing. I never played as a defender. Never, ever played as a defender. And it, it, it's a, a story of two hours. 
uh, Gary Hampson, Frank Gray was injured, and uh, the lad in the reserves, he did a, a couple of naughty things. Uh, so he got expelled from the club. Uh, and really, you know, Eddie Gray, who the manager then, he says, listen, we, we need a left back, you know. And he come up to me, he says, look, we man, you know, and that's a big, broad Scottish accent. And, you know, Eddie was six foot two, big, these big shoulders. He went, we man, we might need you to play left back. And this was when I was like 15, 16 years of age. We've got a reserve game. Do you want to play left back in a reserve game? And guess who was playing in front of me? Peter Barnes, ex-Manchester City player. <laughs> How about that? We, we, we ended up playing at Roker Park in front, in, in front of probably about 10,000 fans. And all Peter says to me was, Terry, give me the ball, wee man. You, I'll, I'll do everything. And, 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 and another player I played with, you're not going to believe on the left-hand side, Tommy Hutchinson. How about that? Oh at Swansea. Right, Legend. Yeah. Hey, how about that? So, listen... You know, I played, I played with some fantastic international, world-class international players. But I ended up going to left-back at 16, 15 and a half, 16 years of age. And uh, you know what? I enjoyed it. I just enjoyed it. I just said, look, I'm playing. I'm not going to moan and groan. I'm going to get on with it and, and work hard. And I went out every day on my own to do shadow play on my own. That's what I did. Fair play to you for, for adapting to it so well. And I suppose when you, when you get opportunities like that, you, you'd, you'd be crazy to say no. you you just got to grab it and do the best you can, which it sounds like you've done. Oh, yeah. Listen, I was never... Listen, when someone hands you a shirt and you're going to be in the first 11, you don't throw the shirt to the floor and start uh, bitching the morning. You go, thank you very much. The only probably position I couldn't play is in goal because I'm only two foot two. You know, so... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but... but over, other than that, uh, no, I, I mean, anywhere. You put me anywhere and I would, I would have played. It, it's the love of football, isn't it? You grow up to play football. This day and age, oh, I can't play in this position. I can't play in this, that position. I can't adapt to this system. I can't adapt to that system. You're a professional footballer, man. Yeah. You're supposed to be able to adapt to anything, any system, anywhere on the field. Because if you're watching it and analysing your, your teammates playing, and then it's in training... Don't tell me I couldn't go and play right wing or centre midfield or up front. Of course you can, if you want to really do it. Yeah. It's, yeah. It, it's for, funny. We've for me, this is so funny you saying this, Terry, because one of the later questions, but what you've actually kind of answered it now is, I've, I've been saying to, to Tom and the other admins that Terry Phelan, for me, is a real Pep Guardiola player for exactly the reason you're saying, that you're versatile. That I tell you, I, 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 likes in a player being able to play in different positions. I mean, I get goose pimples. I could have probably played with Pep at Barcelona. I had the chance to go to Barcelona, but uh, Barcelona was only paying a million and a half. Manchester United was only paying a million and a half. Celtic was only paying a million and a half. Uh, uh, Spurs was on two million. Uh, Crystal Palace was a two million and a half. Glasgow Rangers was two million and a half. Ajax was uh, a million and a half. And I'm thinking, I went to Sam and Mama and said, please, let me go to Barcelona. He said, Terry, they're only offering a million and a half. You're worth two and a half million. That is it. And I went, all right then, Sam, fair enough. And then Peter Reed coming at the last minute and I wasn't turning Manchester City down. To tell you the truth, I was never going to turn him down. You know, and I, Peter gave me a blueprint and said, Terry, this is what we're building. I went, wonderful. And look at some of the players on that, that you know, that, 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 in that picture now. You know, uh, but yeah, I, I mean, I love playing football. We grew up at Leeds with the ball on the floor, being expansive. Uh, you know, the ball goes to a, a white shirt and it comes back to a white shirt and then be excited with the ball. That's how I grew up, being excited. That, and that just shows you're in that goal there. It's just yeah. being excited with the ball. It's, it's and bizarre, that's what it? Yeah, because we look at the squad that you, you came into. Did you, obviously, obviously being a City fan, I'm assuming, I'm assuming you followed City, even at, even at other clubs, so you, you wouldn't know that oh, yeah. you're coming into. I mean, you you got, you, you got your Keith Kills, you've got your Brightwells, you've got your, yeah. you got your, obviously, both Brightwells, and you've got some, just some, mm. some cracking players where you're coming into that squad. That must have been a really exciting time of your life to, to be signing from Wimbledon to City. Did you, did you expect oh, yeah. to go on and, and, and win things? Cups of course I did. Cup. That's, that, 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 that's, what, that's, that's where I was going. You know, and I could have, I could have went to Tottenham Hotspurs, I could have went to Crystal Palace, but you know, Manchester City, you're going to Main Road, and you, you, you feel, and don't forget, I'd already played at Main Road with Wimbledon. Yeah. Uh, 
and we went there. I think we, we beat one nil. And Keith Curl was playing for Man Manchester City, and he was a captain of that day. I think we beat him one nil, and I got sent off there and all uh, on, a, on an occasion. Uh, but I think the fans already knew uh, what I was like. They'd already seen me playing for Leeds there way back in the day. I think we played a reserve match there, and we got hammered. We got hammered six nil. So, and that was a Baptist. That was wow. This is the big league now. You're coming into, and, you know. Don't forget when you was young, you was playing against a lot of international players. Uh, you know, all the players coming down who was injured or out the team. But for me, going into that side, you had Gary Flickcroft coming through. Fantastic young boy. You had Fitzroy oh, yeah. Simpson there. Yeah. yeah, Fitzroy Simpson. Now Quinn, who was at Ireland with. There. Uh, Ian Bob Brightwell, who was fit, stronger, played against when he was a play right back. Andy Hill was there and all. David White is quick as a, a, a greyhound, you know. Uh, and I remember Peter Reed going, look, we're going to we're going to try and get we're going to if we can we're going to try and get uh, Ian Wright and Matt Letizia. We're going to try and get these type of players uh, back then. Uh, okay, Keith so Cole was to, yes, yes, yes. Oh yeah, yeah. We sat there and, and, and that's what he's that's what we was looking at doing. Uh, and I'm like brilliant blueprint. The training ground was fantastic. You know, then the old Platte Lane training ground was great. You know, the stadium was around the corner. They was building the stadium up, you know. So, for me, it was like, OK, the club wants to go somewhere. Let's see if, we can, let's see if I can add that little piece to, to the jigsaw. It's pretty, it's pretty phenomenal, really. I, I, what was your initial conversation with, with Peter like when he, when he came on board? Was it a phone call or did he, did he come up to the club and meet him? Or, or is, well, it, it's is, it, is it like most meetings in a service station somewhere? No. <laughs> Yeah, of his, Mick Morris, uh, a good friend of his, Mick Morris, who ended up being an agent, and he said, Mick ended up getting my number through a, a friend and saying, listen, Terry, at last minute call, uh, Peter Reed's been on the phone, uh, do you, would you like to go to Manchester City? I said, yeah, let's go. And the deal was done in there, there, there and then, and I just went up the next day, had my medical and trained the day after. It was as quick as that. I didn't wow. even have time uh, to do any, any, any kind of moving. It was bang, in the car, and I went straight up. So there was no messing about. So did, did any of the Wimbledon lot have a good send off for you? Then I can imagine they uh, tried to nick your car or put you in a locker. Or... Well, well, uh, to tell you the truth, a lot of the old lads had gone. Like Vinny Jones had gone, uh, Dennis Wise had gone. Obviously, Keith Curl had gone there. Yes, of course, yeah. Eric Young had gone, and uh, John Fashion, you had gone. And so a lot of them, a lot of the boys was already would have already gone by then. So it was a new clientele coming in. So uh, John Scales was on his on his way. Uh, so for me, it was like, you know, I was one of the, the older brigade, so they never really, <laughs> they never really uh, did anything to me. I was, I, I was kind of left alone. You know, I, I, I probably I'm pretty, was the, I, I, boring I, that, I was pro <laughs> Yeah, I was probably, I was, I was probably the master by then, so, you know, he probably looked up oh, to I me see. a little bit more and, and give me a little bit of credit, so I've got away with it. <laughs> you, you obviously <laughs> play with some really, uh, you obviously play with some really, really good players. Yeah, that I saw growing up. Anyway, in in your world, who who did you enjoy playing with the most? Who who were the best players in your eye? I know it's hard because obviously they were all good players, but in, in well, your uh, eye, are we looking at different clubs? Or are we just looking at Manchester City? At City, at City itself, because we, we spoke to um, Keith well, Curl this week, and we, he talked yeah. about Mauricio Gardino and a few others, and you know, it's oh yeah, like, yeah, yeah, Gardino. I mean, you know, you you, you look at him. Uh, I think, I think, you know, I know. Steve McMahon coming at a, a, a later stage uh, with him there and playing against Mac and I'm thinking well, I'm playing I'm playing beside a legend there you yeah. know even though I was coming into being an international myself uh, now Quinn now Quinn was great to play with I, I used to love playing with, with now Quinn I played with him at the youth team for Ireland all the way through Keith Curl fantastic obviously at Wimbledon you know we was roommates at uh, uh, Manchester City and all, you know, that's like Gary Flickcroft, David White, you know, I used to play against David White and it was like, it was always like a battle, you know, but I used to get into his head a little bit and it was like, wow, I've got an array of, I've got an array of players around me here who could take the club to the next level if it was allowed to. So there was, there, even Ian Brightwell, Ian Brightwell, steady Eddie, eight out of ten, Every game, no yeah. nonsense. And then you had little players coming like Richard Edgill. He was coming through. You had Mike Sheeran there, who was absolutely on fire at, at them time. So, you know, they wasn't legends. They was young kids coming through. But for me, I think it was now Quinn, Keith Curl, the older brigade, 
uh, Steve McMahon, and and the one and only Tony Colton. How could how, how could you not want to play in front of Tony Colton? TC, absolutely brilliant. It's funny, I, you probably recognise that goalkeeper top from a, a, a certain Mr. Colton. Yeah. I it's do that, actually but, see that right over your left yeah, hand shoulder there. I, yeah, I grew up, I grew up as a goalkeeper and a centre half of playing with school, so I was, I was very much a goalkeeper because I was, I was the, one of the tallest in the school. So that I was as, as, as tall as I was wide. So yeah, just but, with, with TC, <laughs> TC had great feet. He had a great left foot, and he could use his feet and all because he used to join in the head tennis and the fibre sides. It, it, it was great. It was great with his feet. TC, TC, TC could have played in this day and age now, no problem. Easy. And he should have, I think he only got about, what, three England caps. I know, you know, David Seaman was in front of him, but I always, Terry, you know, in my lifetime, I'm in my 40s now, you know, if I pick my yeah. City 11, I always put Tony Coton in goal. I, oh. I think he was absolutely phenomenal. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. Funny. You know, he had a bit of nastiness about him and all, and he, no nonsense. If you didn't do your work in front of him, he was on you in the dressing room. Fantastic. And what a lovely bloke and all, you know. And when you go into Man City, the first thing you do is you look at the players around you and who you're going to. And you're thinking, Tony Colton, done his bit at Birmingham, uh, England. Keith Curl, I've played with Keith Curl. David White, getting into the England scene. You're now playing with international players. And that's what you want to do when you go to a club. You want to see who can make you better as a player and all. And who, and who you can bounce things off and... You know, I mean, they had some, they had some wonderful players around. George Kincladzi coming, we're forgetting little George Kincladzi. I don't think we've really seen the best of him, but little Georgie coming, uh, absolutely fantastic. You know, uh, Uwe Rosler coming and all. You know, so these these lads were starting to come in. I was starting to use a little bit of that uh, overseas flair, but I just think if Peter Reid would have got someone like a, a an Uwe Rosler or a George Kincladzi. That would have added even more ammunition to us. You, you mentioned so you mentioned so many so many top top names there, Terry. We obviously there's only so many trophies to go around. We we know that there's only maybe maybe two yeah. maybe that we could have played for two of the cups. Um, yeah. some, of, some of the runs we had, I I every year as a kid growing up, we're going to win it this year. We're going to win something this year, and I would have yeah, my yeah. left arm to be in a league cup final. What, what, yeah. what yeah. do you think it would have taken for, for the team that you played in and its pomp to have, have, have won something? And we never really seemed to have achieved what I thought we could have achieved growing up. I think we was missing just a couple of players. I think we was missing uh, somebody really to cement playing against Nalquin of experience. Yeah. You know, real experience. And uh, obviously, Reedy was coming to the end. Macca's legs was going a little bit. Maybe a top quality centre midfield player. Uh <laughs> At the back, we had uh, Keith Curl, uh, Michelle Vonk. Obviously, TC was in there. The right back spot was a fight between Ian Brightwell and Andy Andy Hill. Obviously, yeah. the left back spot was I was in there myself. And I, I think a quality left winger. You know, obviously we brought Rick Holden in for his for his sheer crossing. Uh, but you know, he get out of his feet and cross balls in. But I don't think he was somebody who would go quickly around players and make things happen in a, a, a different direction, you know. Uh, so, so for me, I think a top quality centre forward to go alongside now Quinn, which Peter Reid was looking at. Uh, uh, you know, I'm not saying Rick was any different, but actually, Arsenal, left-hand spot, and uh, a, a top older midfield player. I think Mike, Michelle Vaughan was great as a, as a centre-back. If you wanted another centre-back, maybe another centre-back. And then, then you've got a centre-back midfield, Left wing, I think that you would have done it. I think we would have, we would have challenged for not just the cups. We would have challenged for the league. We was yeah. we was a two or three players short of, of that year. That's what I believe. But I'm really honest. In, you know, we looked at it. We had a great preseason, '92 coming through to '93, and we're thinking, yeah, this is this is it. Let's build on this the next year. Uh, let's go out and get these players, and you know, the, and. The, Peter Reid, the gaffer, he had some fantastic players, but he had younger players coming on all through the uh, the reserves, the youth team. You know, people are, like I said before, Richard Edgill, uh, Gary Gary Flickcroft was coming through there, and also uh, uh, David Brightwell. Big big David Brightwell was coming coming through. So he had so he had sort of nucleus of good lads uh, and young lads who was really going to cement themselves in the team. 
What were, what were your main highs and lows? It's easy to say, it's easier said than done that. But as you as as you left the club, gutting as it was, we'll talk about that later. Um, what what were your key key points that you look back at your career at City and think you know this this worked well, this worked well. What what takeaways have you got for yourself going forward? Big hit of was Peter Reid leaving the club. Uh, that, that 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 for me the real, the real reason I joined Manchester City in the first place because Peter was there and you know a legend of a player played against him when he was you know, obviously playing for Everton and that uh, and he had big plans he, he was a fantastic man management I thought the way he, he, he got the players pumping you see what he did at Sunderland with the team there uh, I think that was a real big downer for me that that was a real big downer and then things started happening with the club. Uh, the chairman I thought was fantastic, you know, and he did spend his money. Let's be honest, supporters said he did spend his money. He spent two and a half million on Keith Curl, two and a half million on himself. I think he spent close to a million on Niall Quinn coming in. Uh, yeah. So he was spending his money. And years before we come, he was spending his money. Uh, I just think, yeah, Peter going, we didn't really get the players. And then there was manager after manager. Once you get manager after the manager after manager, then you know you're on to a little bit of a slippy slope. Yeah, no, it's, it's, yeah, it's spot on really, isn't it? If there's no consistency in the management, then everything else will, won't be as solid around it going forward. No, so, yeah. and, that's, and that's not blaming the, 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 the managers what come in by no means. But, you know, for me, for, for me Owen was, it, it left a little bit of a blank space with me, that one. You know, and I'm thinking, well, I could have went to all of these other clubs. I've come to Man City. I've come there because Peter's there and he's got his staff there. And, you know, he's bringing players in. I've got Keith Crow beside me. I've got now come there. Let's add a little bit more. And it never really materialised. But that didn't say I didn't give 100% when I was putting the blue shirt on. You know, yeah, I, 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 give, I, yeah, I agree. I, I, don't think I, know, I, don't think, I don't think I know any, any City fan that had ever, ever questioned you. Your, your percentage, mm. absolutely not. You know, you always, you always seem to, you, you, you're never short of energy. <laughs> well, I enjoyed it. Listen, you, 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 you're a football player, you're playing for a, uh, listen, I don't care what anybody says, you're playing for a big club, even back then. Manchester City, is a, in, its, in its own right, is a big club, you know, at, at the end of the day. Uh, history, all right, then Champions Leagues or European, the European Cup, the, the, the main European Cup back in them days, you know, yeah. But uh, it eluded them. But you know, you look at the players what's been through the club. You look at the history of the club. You know, it's a it's a massive club. And even now, when I mention Manchester City, they, they just don't remember it. They just don't remember it now. They remember it way back. Old Main Road, the Kip Hacks. Remember Platt Lane, Terry. Do you remember them good, good, good times and all? You know, times are fantastic for Manchester City at this this present time. Who would have ever thought? Pep Guardiola would be sat there. Who would have ever thought somebody would have come in and and, and bought the club and spent two hundred and fifty million on a, a wonderful academy? You know, hopefully that academy can start producing the players. It's it's funny. It's funny you mention this. They they've mentioned the question before, um, and, and this is this is this is a bit of a sidewards question. This I was going to ask you later, this later on. Who would you take from the current City squad to have played played alongside you in the in the squad of City that you played in? Who, which which player would you have liked to have played with the most? Uh, in the present squad, in the present team, yeah. to take back in time. So you're, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, obviously, uh, Kevin De Bruyne. No, no, no doubt. You know, yeah, he could have. He could have. That's the person we was missing with with, with the people, the re team. Someone like that, an attacking midfield player, a real good attacking midfield player. Uh, I know Vincent Company isn't there now, but I would have loved to have played with Vincent Company. Him and Keith Curl slotting in together. That would have been dynamic. Okay. That would have been dynamic. Uh, so you know, and and Sterling, Sterling out, Sterling probably on the on just in front of me, Sterling, David White could stay on the right hand side, Sterling on the left hand side with myself, uh, uh, and you've got to you've got to have uh, David Silver in your team and all, haven't you? Yeah. So that for me, with with you know, I know I'd have Big Nal Quinn up there. And Aguero feeding off Big Nile Quinn, get the balls up to Big Quinn, he's holding it off, <laughs> feeding it off to Little Aguero, coming inside him and peeling off him. You've got Kevin De Bruyne forming for. Uh, you, I, I'd play, I, hopefully, I try and play a some kind of a 4 3 3 ever could do that, but 
if I, if I couldn't and I could pay, play a 10, 5, 6, 9, 10, I'd be happy with that and all. <laughs> Oh, what a great answer. I love that. We were some t uh, team now, but we had, we had some talent. We talk about that a lot, Terry, that, you know, a lot of City fans think that we we don't have that plan B in games, you know, when we're such an attacking team and we, mm. you know, we we're struggling a bit up front. You know, mm. we a lot of us fans think that we really shouldn't have ever sold Dzeko. That one, kind of in the Niall Quinn mode a little bit. Yeah. Do you think... Yeah. Nowadays, do you, do you think we miss a play like that? You know, do you think Guardiola should have that little option of having, you know, the big rangy well, striker who can play off an Aguero? If we if we go back with 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 Pep when he was at Barcelona and he brought in uh, Slatten, didn't he? He brought in Slatten yeah. to sort of like change that mold, and it didn't quite really work because Slatten wants balls. But everything went through the midfield, went through Lionel Messi, went on the uh, on the, the other side. It was on Ray, it went through. And Slatten was starved of service. You know, he, he did his bit, but he was starved of service. Slatten wants the ball up to him. So, yeah, I think Dzeko would have been absolutely fantastic now. You know, very underrated centre-forward. You know, you're yeah. watching for Roma and the, the goals he scored for Roma. You know, I, I do uh, a lot of the Champions League for so many sports in India. We have our own okay. show, so... Uh, you know, we're, we're watching, you know, Champions League football. You know, watch La Liga and Serie A. And for me, the only problem is there is, does he want to be sitting on the bench? You know, a top player like that, he wants to be playing. Now, with Pep, Pep loves his, does he have to play with a, a centre-forward? No. Can he drop six midfield players in there? You know, can he in, in, in integrate players coming from left, right? players from the middle. You look at what he did against uh, Real Madrid and I don't think any pundit could fathom it out the first 20, 30 minutes of what he was actually doing with, uh, with Esus playing on the left-hand side dropping in and De Bruyne playing as a, a makeshift set forward, bombing forward. So I think that's a bit of Pep's makeup. I think if he has a big man, then it does naturally when you're under a little bit of pressure it does from back players. They do go from back to front. And I don't think that's Pep's uh, makeup. But yeah, for me, uh, Dzeko's always been that player who really uh, should still be playing in the Premier League because I think he's really good enough to be doing that. Yeah. Dave, was it, Dave, was it you the other day that said Dzeko scored more goals for Roma than he did for City now? Yeah. Right? You said that the other he's day. Scored, he's got a, a little bit of a better goal ratio as well for Roma than, mm. than, he, than he had for yeah. City. Um, yeah, I just mm. think we undersold him for, you know, still in his 20s when we sold him to Roma. I think I Roma think, yeah. were rubbing their hands when I, we said... I thought, it, I thought, lads, I thought it was absolutely uh, ridiculous. I thought it was ridiculous because, you know, uh, I don't know, but, you know, you, you want to play. And if you're not getting that game time, you know, you don't want to be sat in the stands. You didn't want to be sat in the stands and sat on the bench. You want to play. And I just don't think the makeup uh, <clears throat> for him was there at that time and obviously he's gone on to Rome and he's been absolutely the goals he scores absolutely fantastic some yeah. of the goals he scored I remember the goal he scored in the Champions League against Chelsea where it come over his shoulder boom on the left hand side fantastic volley so it just shows you the type of stuff he can yeah, yeah still, a, still, still a City fan as well you know if you've talked to Dzeko he still loves City so how can you not love City you know, you know how can you not let's, let's be honest yeah, they, back in the day, they didn't win a lot. But it, 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 I think it was a family club. It was more of a family club. And I still get cheesed off when they say, oh, Man City can't fill a stadium. And I, but these are proper hardcore Manchester people. These are not people from all over the world, you know. Uh, these are hardcore Manchester people who go down and, and sit there. So, you know, I think it's fantastic what Manchester City are doing. And it's not just for me, but for you fans. We've had to enjoy the hard times, them cold, rainy nights, and they've been beat. And I think it's fantastic for you guys, uh, more than us ex-players and our, us older ex-players who played at my. I think it's. I, I just look at the fans and say, you deserve it, and and, and that's what you deserve. A, a good success. Bless you. Do you know what? I'll I'll, I'll drink to that, pal. Any any day of the week, I'll get, I'm on yeah. way to continue. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm. Listen, I'm I'm sure it will. You know. Uh, Obviously, what, 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 what's going on now at this present time in, in the world, you know, uh, you know, people are just waiting for football to come back. And I know there's been a lot of football and this and that. 
but it, it's entertainment at the end of the day and you know it, 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 it's a great relief that uh, you know the players want to go out there the staff want to go out there at this present time and, and put a show on I think it's fantastic what do you, what do you want to do and I take my hat off to all, everybody associated with every club we've wanted to go out there and, 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 and carry on the, uh, the, the, the EPL I want to. I want to. I've asked you one question about the past, if that's all right. And I want to take you back to that that that, that goal game. And this is this is something Dave was mentioning the other day. So hopefully you don't mind me asking the question for you on your behalf, Dave. No, um, go for it. Obviously, how, how, how do we put this? Obviously, the, the, the police, police horses, etc. Did you did you know what was going on? Do you know why the city cans came on the pitch? Do you know what was? Did you did you as a player know what was going on when it, when it all went off and? I, I think you, you, you sense the level. When we went 2-1 down, 3-1 down, you, you, I, I think it was really, uh, let, me, let, let, let me put this in the right way. I think the City really peased off, to tell you the truth. Uh, they did look at it. We, we, we did that year very well at 92-93 uh, season. You know, we was bombing in the, uh, the league. We was doing well in the league. We was winning great games. We was coming back and winning games. And I think everybody in that stadium on that day knew that we could end up winning this game. If we would have won that game, we would have went on and won the, the cup. And I think people had the FA Cup cemented on their arms and the chests and the legs and everything. It was yeah, that year. Did. <laughs> honestly, and I, and I honestly do. And as a, as a, as a, as a player, you want to give your all. For me, and I, it was like every day, every game, every training game, every training session, you give your all. But this particular day, lads, we've got to give our all. We've got to give something back to these punters who are there. And that's all what matters. And we, we tried it, but it just fell apart. It just, that, this, is the, this is football. Because Spurs, Spurs, we absolutely hammered them. But it just fell apart. But uh, then you see that, I, when, when, when I scored the goal, you knew there was a lot of unrest. You know, a, a lot of unrest, uh, disappointment. And I can, I can fully understand the disappointment. Uh, so, you know, the fans coming on the field, the horses coming on there, the taste, the taste wasn't there. You know, it's like tasting, a, you know, a bad sandwich. It just wasn't there at the end. And I understand it. I fully understand why. I still fully understand why the, the, the fans come on the field. Maybe they shouldn't have, but I, I understand the frustrations that it was their year and it's, it just evaporated in, in, in that game. Yeah. It just really evaporated. Yeah, we were Al we were Alan Hansen's tip that season to win the FA Cup, and I think yes, I remember Terry, that. All yeah. those City fans just absolutely bought into that and and came to that game. We knew it'd be a hard game, but I yeah. really think we all felt we're going to win this and we're going to we're, we're going to beat this curse. We're going to lift that cup. Yeah, and that, and and you know, don't forget all the pressure was on the players and all. There was great pressure on the players, more pressure on the players then than there was now. Because don't forget, he brought Keith Curl in to win a trophy two and a half million. He brought Terry Field in two and a half million. He brought players in. So there was more pressure on us to deliver something for Manchester City. And it's up to us to do And I'm like, listen, I've come to a big club because I want to win trophies. I haven't just come here to pick a, a pay packet up. I've come to win trophies. I won one at Wimbledon. I've come here to win one. And uh, it was really disappointing. And you know, the thing was, the next day, we was walking around the pitch and honestly, it, 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 it was a terrible feeling walking around the pitch. It was so sad. It was so sad, honestly. We'll, we'll move on from that sadness because it's got a bitter taste, isn't it, in all our mouths. So we'll try and move yeah. past as quickly as possible. But I'm going to have to mention a really another bitter point now because there, there came a time in 95 where you moved to Chelsea. That, that wasn't a pretty day. What, what, that was what, probably... What was, that that was probably that was probably one of the worst, uh, you know what, I won't say the worst days of my life because I was still playing football, I still had a job, I was still getting paid, I was, you know, I was still putting a shirt on, even though it was, it was a blue shirt, it was a dark blue shirt. Uh, <clears throat> to tell you the truth, it just come out of the blue. I had no recollection. I remember going training, I had a hamstring injury, I was going getting treatment of the physio, uh, watching the lads train, and I think it was Alan Ball. Yep, Alan Ball. It was Alan Ball manager then, yeah, it was Alan Ball who was manager then. No problems, you know, uh, looking to play again, getting in and, you know, staying at Manchester City for my entire career. 
I had no hesitations of leaving or going anywhere. Next thing, I get pulled in the, the, the hallway. Uh, Chelsea have made a bid for you. You're going. We need the money. I said, sorry? What do you mean we're going? I, we need the money. You know, I spent three years here. You know, the first year was absolutely fantastic. The other couple of years were a bit turbulent, but, uh, you know, I want to stay. I don't, I, don't, I don't want to leave. I want to stay and, and, and fight through this and, 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 and get better. And no, uh, we're, we're taking the offer. Uh, we would like you to go. And I said, why? I said, I haven't done nothing wrong. I've trained well. I've played well when you've asked me to play. I've trained well. I'm no, I, I'm no uh, nonsense to you. I've gone out. I don't want to go. And he went, uh, no, we're, we're, we've accepted it. The chairman's accepted the offer. And I think the chairman then was uh, Francis Lee. Accepted the offer, a million. We need the money. Uh, you're going. I, I was absolutely gutted. So you in the same you know, boat as Pardon? You in the same boat as us then, pal? Well, I was good because you still had Keith Cool there. You still had Nal Quinn there. You know, you know, you still had David White there. And then they started getting drip fed out and all. But I was like, well, you know, what? I couldn't, I couldn't actually understand what I'd actually done wrong. You know, uh, I was playing okay. I was doing well at Manchester City. I had, I had. You know, dreams of winning something with Manchester City and being one of those players in that generation who could maybe deliver something. I was playing for Ireland. I was playing some fantastic football. And then I, I went to Chelsea. You know, when I went to Chelsea, we played Manchester City a few a few months later. And the biggest disappointment for me was ever, anything was getting booed off the Manchester City fans. Oh, right. That was, that was... And I remember... I, 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 I remember... Uh, Messages and letters coming in saying, Terry, it was an absolute disgrace what the fans uh, uh, did down on that. that when when uh, we do apologise for that. So there was fans who was apologising. Because I thought I was at Manchester City and, you know, sometimes you can be a scapegoat. Uh, and I, I, know, I know Richard Edgeo was coming in and he could slot into that left back position. Uh, but he was predominantly uh, right back. And I, I just said, I, I, and it took me a, it took me a while to get over it because actually to London, you know, I'd already been in London for five years. Uh, so, you know, I got on with it, and that was it. I went back to London and started playing for Chelsea. Thing is, fans never always know the truth, do they? Not until years well, later, so, you know. It's... Well, well, they don't to tell you the truth. And you know, when when you know, fans pay the money. They're entitled to say what they want. They're entitled to criticise players on the field if they're playing poorly. But I, I, I don't know why they criticise them for moving up to another club if they don't really know the real story. Yeah. You know, okay. if anything, if anything, uh, they should be asking questions from the owners or from the manager, but not, not of the player. Because I'll tell you now, 100%, I never wanted to leave Manchester City at that present time. No, and we, we didn't want you to leave. <laughs> yeah, bon bonkers. Yeah. You know? Bonkers. We, um, you, you famously went to the World Cup in '94. Um, for any for any player, as, as a City fan, playing for City would have been my, without a shadow of a doubt, I highlight. And you had the added extra playing for your country as well. That must have been, that must have been a bonkers time of your life. That must have been amazing. Well, listen, you know when you you're growing up as a young boy and you're on the streets and you've got the cobble streets and you've got the curves, you've got that flyaway ball. If a bit of wind comes, it's going, you know, four hundred. Uh, miles down the down the streets, and you're chasing it over entries and uh, bins and cars, and and you're thinking to yourself, "I'd love to play in a World Cup. I'd love to play in an FA Cup final." You know, you're watching it on your black and white TV back then, and you know you don't know who's who. You know, the ball's white. You know, you don't know who's who. Uh, that's shirts, by the way. Uh, so you know, let's <laughs> stop that wrongly. You know, and uh, you're thinking to you just thinking to yourself. Like any other musician, you know, or film star, I want to, I'd love to be on TV and I'd love to be in a trophy. I remember watching the, uh, the 78 World Cup when Argentina won it in Argentina. Great, fantastic Aussie idealist, big Ricky Villa, uh, Daniel Passarello, Mario Kempes, all them wonderful players. And I was a great fan of the, the Brazilian side and all. And I said to myself, no, I'd love to play in a World Cup, you know. I'm going to be playing for Ireland. I wanted to play for Ireland. My mother was Irish. All the family was Irish. I want to play for Ireland. 
I started off in the youth team. I come from the youth team all the way right through. There's not many. There's not many players want to do that. You know, me, Dennis Irwin, now Quinn. Uh, we, we we went all the way through. So for me, putting that green jersey on, and I get goose pimples now. And playing in the World Cup in '94, and playing against the Italians, and there's just short of a hundred thousand people there in the giant stadium. It's we've arrived. I've I've actually arrived. I won the FA Cup with. Uh, uh, Wimbledon, actually playing against Liverpool, you know, and watching Liverpool uh, grow up because they was always on the TV, winning trophies, yeah. And any boy or any girl who goes and plays in a World Cup is your pinnacle, isn't it? It's yeah. your pinnacle. We and don't forget, we got to the last sixteen. Ireland had already got to the World Cup in nineteen ninety, so back to back World Cups, you couldn't beat it. Plus the nineteen eighty eight uh, Euros. So there's three uh, competitions in a row which they went to. That was the um, that was it was in America, wasn't it? So was that your first trip to America then? Before no, we we no we'd actually been to America in '92 and played in the USA Cup in 1992. Uh, you know, straight after the season, a long guard season, you're being flown. But I never moaned. I just used to get on. I just used to love go playing tree. You know. A lot, of, a lot of players, you say, oh, it's Mickey Mouse. This is a Mickey Mouse tournament. But for me, it was putting another cap on your head, you know, and, and, and playing for your country and, and being exciting and training and then going home and spending time with your family. That's what you're a footballer for. That's what you get paid for, to play football. So yeah. why wouldn't you want to go away with your country? I don't understand it. I really yeah. don't understand it. What were, you, uh, what were your highlights for, for Ireland? I think, I think obviously... Uh, Obviously, going to the World Cup was one great island. We, we got beaten a couple of uh, playoffs, low points. Obviously, going to, just pulling the green jersey on. You know, when you pull a green jersey on and you're walking into a, a room, I was playing for Wimbledon at the time, you know, a small club playing in the first division, but rock solid. We was rock solid as players. Our minds was rock solid. I remember walking into the dining room and I'm thinking, I'm out of my depth here. <laughs> I'd already played for Leeds. I played for Swansea. I'm out of my depth. Look at it. Look at it. John Aldridge is over there. John Aldridge, who had played against in 1988. You know, John Aldridge is over there. Mark Lawrenson's there. You know, oh, I knew Quinny was there. And Mick, Mick, Mick McCarthy, who played for Manchester City. Packy Bonner. I'm looking around this table and I'm thinking, wow. And you know what? Ray Houghton. And I'm thinking, these lads are just like my brothers. They just was just fantastic. I mean, Mick McCarthy got me under his wing. He says, and Packy Bond from New Zealand. And he, he was a little bit overweight for the Charleston battery. And he, he was doing all right. So Chris Ramsey then, uh, the Brighton player, Chris Ramsey, he was the he was the coach, the manager. And he says, Terry, what do you think of him there? I said, he's a little bit overweight. You know, the heat probably struggling. But he said, yeah, I thought the same thing. I said, where's he from? He went, New Zealand. I said, New Zealand? I said, sign him straight away for coming all the way from New Zealand. He went, do you think so? I said, yeah. So we signed Blair. Blair was from New Zealand. And... You know, when I was coming to the end of uh, the, the, the American, I started me coaching around about the 2003, 2004, got into the business side of coaching. And he says, listen, we're looking for a, a head coach player coach down in New Zealand. And I says, 2005, got the family, headed down to New Zealand. Dog, cats, everything. We're going to New Zealand. Landed in New Zealand. And he said, it's beautiful. The weather, the, the water's lovely and warm. It's freezing because you're down on the North Island. And he enjoyed it. I had six good years in New Zealand. You know, testing times. But it was all, everything for me was a challenge. Going to Manchester City was a challenge. Could have won the fans over was a challenge. Going to Everton could have won the fans over and a challenge. Chelsea, all them clubs was always a challenge. So I said, listen, I had enough of America. Jumped down to New Zealand six years. And then I get a phone call. Uh, Teddy, there's a, a group in India looking for a, uh, a chief mentor. Your name's been bounced about. Uh, would you be, would you, you know, would you think about it? This was in Goa, uh, Academy called Sesa, Sesa Goa, over in Goa. I said, you know what? I said to the, the, you know, the family, we've been here six years. Let's go to India. And he went, yeah, let's go and have an adventure. So we went and had an adventure for two years in Goa. Uh, and then the schooling wasn't the greatest, so we decided to come back to England for a couple of years, put the children in some uh, fantastic schools, get their education, which was very important. And then I get another call from the Kerala Blasters in 2014 down in Kerala. This is South India. Terry would like you to be the technical director. Look. 
uh, uh, would you would you take the job? No problem. Yeah, because I'd already been in India. I was there for four four point five years, and I'm up in Bangalore at this present time with a, a beautiful little club called South United FC in Bangalore. And they're building now. We're building a you know a four five million dollar state of the art academy, which is just ongoing now. So yeah, I've been here for five years, coming wow. on nearly six years, and uh, you know I've enjoyed the journeys. Australia, New Zealand, America, India. Now, India, this is the second stint. And it feels like home. So I, I just don't have no problems. That's phenomenal, that, mate. So we're going to have to coach in badges and so forth. Are you, are, you, are you at the top of where you can go with that? Or is that, are you kind of in the middle? Where, where are you at with, with coaching? Yeah, I've, t- I've t- took my coaching badges. I haven't, I, haven't, I haven't took my pro license because uh, for me to take the pro license, you've you, you got you to gotta, you gotta look higher. You've got to look for the, for the top to top, you know. And the FA Co- uh, uh, Pro License, it, it's a great, it's a, listen, it's a great license to have. But for me, you know, I'm more into the, uh, you know, the youth setup, you know, yeah. Dummy yeah, youth yeah, yeah. shirts, youth badges. So I'm more into that, uh, academy badges. I, I'm more into that than, you know, looking at probably coaching Manchester City or, you know, and I think if you, if you I'd love to, man, don't, don't, you know, don't, let's not say that, but... I mean, if you're looking to really go to the top, I don't think at my down at the grassroots level and that youth level, uh, do you? I mean, yeah, you can go and get a pro license if you want. It takes a lot of time. I think you can go and do that. I think you, you know, if you're young enough, go and do it. I mean, I'm coming up into uh, middle fifties now. Uh, still keep myself super duper fit for obvious reasons to be able to go out there and implement what we want on the training part. So for me, it's, uh, yeah, you do your badges, get as much experience as you can. You can do all the badges in the world, but if you haven't got that experience, then it's a waste of time doing your, ex- your badges. And I don't, I don't mean playing experience. I mean traveling, going seeing different uh, coaching methodologies, uh, different coaching personalities. But at the end of the day, the game is a simple game. And sometimes we overcomplicate it uh, with those coaches. Well said, pal. Do you know what? You must have some fantastic experience to be able to give to not just the, the players in the teams, but also the, the management the management structures around you as well. Yeah, you know, they, they, you know listen, everybody's different, aren't they? You know, in India, it's, it's the sport's growing. It's growing very well. It's growing at a fast pace. The participation in, in the grassroots programmes at this present time with the All Indian Football Federation are doing, they're really trying to push it. You know, we're building a wonderful venue only 10 minutes down the road from us, uh, which is going to be fantastic when it opens. Other, other clubs are doing that. We've got the ISL, you know, when you, you look at the ISL, they've had players over there. David James is over at the Carola Blasters, ex-Manchester City goalkeeper. You know, they've had some wonderful internationals at the end of the career. In the eye, I've got the I League, which is the oldest league in India, which got some fantastic teams. So it's growing with academy structures, but we still need that coach education because a lot of it is part time. So you know, it is still going. Well, you look at you look at the Manchester City group at this present time. They're looking at uh, purchasing Mumbai, Mumbai FC. So that just shows you we, we, we've 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 talked to them and their plans and what they're doing. So yeah, so it's 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 fantastic. You've asked me what about India? What is it? What, India's got great potential. You have got 1.5 billion people. It's got great potential, uh, but it just needs a little bit more guidance. Can you see more ex pros getting over there doing a similar job that you're doing? Then we've had a lot of ex pros over there, you know, in, in various uh, roles. But you've got to look at the long term projects instead of the short term. And I, I think uh, maybe a few owners look at quick gains instead of the, the, the long-term view. Yeah. It's a long-term view, isn't it? If you've got a, a 10-year-old uh, boy or girl and you want to develop them, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take you six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years to do that. It's not just going to happen overnight. So it's more about patience than anything else. And then, you know, getting the buy-in from owners, getting the buy-in from the players, getting the buy-in from your coaches who you're working with, because the coaches have to adapt. But what, I, I, what I've done is gone... You show me what you can do. Show me. You, you learn me. And that's what I've always said. You learn me. You learn me about your culture. Learn me about your training philosophies. Learn me about your training methodologies. You learn me. 
and then I'll give you a little bit of what I've learned. So you've got to try and mirror image it. You cannot come in and start, you know, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, and changing it completely. Because don't forget, India is a big place, and players come from all over. Food's different, language is different. You've got uh, the Northeast, the food is completely different from the South players, you know? Uh, so you, you, as, a, as a coach coming in, you've got to recognise that, mm. you know? You've got to recognise quickly. If you don't, then you can't be going around, well, they've never played in Europe. They're, we have got players who, who can play in Europe, in India. We've got players, but they just need that more nurturing. And don't forget, if they go to a, 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 a place in Europe, they're going to be playing with better players. There's going to be better infrastructures. There's going to be more game time. There's going to be more training time. So naturally, they're going to get better. But I just don't think they're given that time to adapt to the lifestyle. And you've got to give them time. You know what? I could, I could talk to you about this all day, Terry. It's so interesting. Honestly, it's such a developing yeah. market. 1.5 billion people, it's huge as well. When you think well, about what, the what, opportunities, crikey. Well you, well, you look at your own club there coming into it. You know, fantastic. Manchester City group coming into Mumbai, it will happen. Obviously, get over this uh, crap present. It will happen. You know, they see something they're trying to build. So for them, to come in, the, the man, the, the city groups will come in and turn around and say, "Well, you know, we see something here. We see potential." Clubs like that don't come in if there's nothing and True. there's no potential there. They don't come in. They don't. So they don't come in. And they'll come in. They'll make it more professional. Uh, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll be good for the younger players, maybe at Manchester City. You can come down for a little bit of experience for six or seven, eight months and play in the ISL. Great experience. Getting away from home, getting away from the surroundings, getting outside that bubble, getting more experience, living experience, you know, social skills, that type of experience. And, you know, it can be done. Brilliant. Brilliant. Well, listen, we, we've taken... Uh, what time is it over there? It's about, is it half eight there? At night? Oh, it's, 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 nine, it's nine o'clock. It's don't worry about it. Is it still bright? Yeah. Pardon? It's still bright outside. It looks bright. No lights on in your no, house. N- no, it, no, it's, it's dark outside. It gets dark here around about seven o'clock. Does it? Right. Okay, okay. Yeah. Dave, have you got anything else to add to our friend Terry? Yeah, so just just a, a reminisce, Terry. This is one that we did with Keith Curl a couple of weeks ago as well. Um, 7th of November, 1993. Manchester City 2... Manchester United three. Were you playing oh, in that game? Don't don't even go. I mean, Manchester that United. was. You know, you go back and you know, as you say, you know, Manchester City fans winning winning that derby was a big 1993, thing. Did you say? Did is is that the one Roy Keane scored at the last minute? Yeah, and is this that is the, the one that's where, where yeah, two nil up. We're two nil up. Right, I can, I can, I'll, tell, I'll tell you what happened. We're two nil up. We're playing a, a five. We're playing a, a five three two. We're cruising the game two nil up, uh, and it's like we're going at half time, and it's right, lads. We need to change this now. We need to change to a a four four two. I was saying to the gaffer then, we need to change to four four two because the fullbacks are pushing us back, and the wingers are pushing us. Uh, Myself back, I think I don't know. I think Andy Hill must have played over on that uh, right hand side. I'm not too sure, but he was pushing us back, you know. And well, like we can't get out, you know, we can't get out. So let's go to four four two. Let's man man up. We'll win the game. Bang bang bang. Yeah. And we have, if you remember, I think Last they got... comes in, splits the back four, back in it. Good. And I think... David David White missed a sitter as well to make it Absolutely. three. If because you don't forget, two. we had bit, yeah, we didn't. Uh, Canton asked scored a couple. Did he? Canton asked scored a couple. No, I think yeah. uh, well, we can remember we hadn't beaten Manchester United for a few years, and and we're thinking again, this is this is the time. This is this could be great for us, and the fans are going mad, and we yeah. come out again, and we knew the pressure was on. We knew that they just played in Istanbul in Turkey. I think they got beat. I think they got beat in, in that game. They got game. beat three two. <laughs> they got there. You go. They got beat three two, and they've come to us. They, you didn't want to come to us then. Where we, we just got into a two 0 up, and we're thinking, one bam, thank you, man. Manchester United. What Manchester United are always doing back in that day? You know, Fergie time, bang. 
there you go. So, what can we say? Can't say much. <laughs> it was good. good I mean, it, it, it was just the irony, Terry, if you remember, like all that kip acts, we were just screaming at United, you know, 2 0 up and you update it up. Well, you were you you th- you, then... you thrown out Turkish delights. Yeah, I remember you thrown out, to, and I think someone picked one up and took a bite of it and threw it back. I don't, I don't know who it was, but I love Turkish delights and all. And I'm thinking, <laughs> I'm thinking, lads, please don't be throwing no more Turkish delights on the field. Then I'm getting rather hungry. But you know, uh, at the end of the day, it was, it was Manchester United was a great side, wasn't it? you know? Yeah. You, you look what they had. Let's let's let us let us let us take nothing away from it. Manchester United was streets and streets above everybody back in that back in the nineties and the early, and, and the early two thousands. So for us to be two 0 up against them, it was like yes, the next day we can re- rejoice. But it didn't happen, unfortunately. I think I'm going to tell you a little story before I go. My mother, God bless her, uh, her soul, was a Manchester United fan, and all all my family are Manchester United fans. I was the only Manchester City fan. And she would never go to a derby because she didn't go to Main Road because she didn't like Manchester City. And she said, son, if we win, you're not allowed in the house. Okay. If, 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 if you win, you're not allowed in the house. If you lose, you can come into the house and sit there and take all the flat. I remember going, I remember popping down to my mum's having a cup of tea and there must have been 20 people in the house. I'm like, oh, here we go. You know, they're all in the Manchester United shirts on, the scarves on, and they're all giving me a bit of flack. My oldest brother's giving me a bit of flack, and I'm like, I know, what can we do? That was it. Back out. My mum smiling there with a big smile on her feet, getting in the car, shoulders humped, head down between my legs, off I go. So, some good oh. times, some great times, you know. That's a memory I'll stay with you for a while, that will, pal. I think, I, I think football does, doesn't it? You know, I, I think now you look at the older... The older ex-pros, ex-pros that have been more recognition than they probably was when they was playing because people want to know what he was doing and what it was like. And they want to know the history about the clubs and the players who was playing for them. And uh, I'm, I'm very privileged to be part of that, that generation who played for big clubs, Chelsea, Manchester City, Leeds, Everton. And not, and, and not just that, you know, your, your, your clubs who helped me along the way, your Swansea's of the world, your Crystal Palaces, you know, your Wimbledons of the world, them, them, them smaller clubs who helped me galvanise going to a, a, a club like Manchester City at that time. Brilliant. Wow. Absolutely brilliant. Well, I, I can't thank you enough for taking the time to speak to us, Terry. It's, uh, it's been brilliant to talk to you. And an eye opener no for problem. You, what you're doing at the moment, buddy. So thank you so much again. Yeah, absolutely. Brilliant. And you, no problem. I, I, one last thing I was going to ask you: did did we develop your song, Terry, or had you heard that when you were at you know your, your Swansea's and Leeds? <laughs> yeah, we've we've got no that Terry feeling. No, I think that was a Kipak song, uh, I think it was. Uh, and it was fantastic. Ironically, I just had a uh, I've just had a message from uh, a friend's son who's a mad mad Crystal Palace fan. And I remember going from Everton to Crystal Palace on loan because I was injured, coming back from injury. And he says, do you remember that song we used to sing? You know, we've got that Terry feeling that, you know. And I'm thinking, yeah, that's only come from, that, that only comes from one group. That comes from a Man City supporter. So obviously the Crystal Palace fans brought it up. I played for them as left back and they started singing it. So fantastic. I mean, listen, lads, I just wanted to be a football player. Uh, and that's all I wanted to do. And, and you know, I can, I can really sit there. Well, yeah, I, I told. And you can achieve anything you want if you really want to put your mind to it. I achieved that goal. It really wasn't about the money for me. It was about going and playing for 30, 40, 50,000 fans or seven or 8,000 fans and just being a football player because that can be never taken away from you. Wonderful. Oh, Wonderful. What, what, what a way to end it, Terry. That's fantastic. Brilliant, pal. Thanks again, buddy. No, really no problem it. at all. Thank, thank you, you very Terry. Much. Really Cheers, appreciate it. Cheers, Cheers pal. Thank, thank you very Bye. much. Cheers, boys. Bye. 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 Oh, great. Do you know, it's so, it's so interesting. It's fantastic talking to to ex pros. It's fantastic talking to ex City players that I used to watch at Main Road. But it, I find it so interesting to find out their history after the game and what yeah. they're doing and what they're ending up to. I, I could talk about I could talk about that for ages. Yeah, just to see how that path goes from there to be. In, incredibly clued in about the game of football, quite obviously, and that maybe I what I probably wasn't quite expecting that to be perfectly honest. 
you know, because you see a lot of players who leave the game and, you know, they open up a pub or, you know, with the money that they've got now, they, you know, they have a, a you know, a property, don't they, you know, and they're managing yeah, yeah, properties yeah. and stuff. So for someone, that's just brilliant for me. Someone who just is absolutely all about football, as he said, not about the money. Yeah. Just wanted to kick a ball around, you know, on a, on a Saturday and it didn't, it didn't matter if it was a, in front of five fans or, or 50,000. And, um, yeah, I mean, for me being, you know, a Kipax boy, you mentioned the Kipax, you know, many times that was, he was an absolute God, you know, to, uh, to me, you know, bombing down that, that, that left wing and really interesting for him to, you know, talk about Pep Guardiola as well. And, you know, some of that, some of that philosophy too, that, you know, don't don't be surprised if you know if we buy this you know this city club that you could go a lot lot wrong you know than getting someone like Terry Feeling in who's whose understanding of the Indian game is obviously already there and oh, he's again, got the links yeah why not yeah if we've talked about Tom of why can't we get more of these ex players who have this affinity you know the Hendries the Mackens the Feelings you know about Manchester City and getting them involved in some way and you know tell them you know, what it means to wear this shirt. I, the, the big takeaway I've got from that is he was so passionate and it only really came across to us. No, I did it at the beginning, but at the middle and a bit more at the end, what he was so passionate about, it's not about the money, it's wanting to play and improve himself and get better. And he's doing that. He's done that at every club he's gone to, as in any role he's gone to, any capacity. Yep. He's kind of like, one from one club and did this, one from the next club to do this. And they've got this opportunity in India. You know, and he, and you can tell, you can see in his brain, you see in his eyes, that there's there's a learning to take from every step he's taken, and you can see, yeah. you can see him actually doing it and actually learning and wanting that passion for the next step, and he's always, always looking for that next step in his career, which I, re- I have a lot of admiration for because he could quite easily go done. Well, finished. yeah, um, my admiration's gone up as well with the you know a, you know a, somewhat like me as well but you know a, a family of united fans you know immediate family and aunties and oh. uncles and cousins and he's there you know wearing a blue shirt in salford and i can i can absolutely identify with that you know apart from my immediate family uh you know my dad and my brother every everyone in my family you know they're, they're all united fans you know so fair play to him for uh, after that game in 93 <laughs> going back for a cup of tea with his mum and getting you know, bantered by his whole family. And, do you know what? Fair play. I, I generally wasn't expecting him to tell me he was a City fan. I, I, I generally thought he was gonna, he wasn't, he's gonna say, oh, you know, one of these types. Of, but the, the, the and he started talking about Peter Barnes, Tommy Booth, and we're like, we've got Peter Barnes on in two weeks. Oh, we've got Tommy Booth on in a couple of weeks as well. I kind, of, I kind of feel like we should invite him on to ask the questions. Yeah, <laughs> I like as well that he. Um, I mean, he played with Keith Curl as well, obviously at Wimbledon, but. You could tell by the number of times that he mentioned Keith Curl. He was obviously a big fan, you know, probably friends with him, but, you know, appreciate him as a, as a real good player as well. Because if you noticed, you know, he said, God, oh, Vincent Company and Keith Curl in that central defence, you know, what a part. How many times have we said that? How many times have we talked about that? And he, and he can see it as well. He's obviously a fan. Brilliant. Yeah. Really enjoyed that. Really, really enjoyed that. What great player for City. Uh, you know, hopefully, you know, for the older fans who are going to watch this, that they've got kind of something from it because he was an absolute Kipax hero as far as I'm concerned. And, you know, for our, uh, for our younger fans who uh, watch this, go and look at some YouTube videos of Terry Phelan because, my yeah. God, he would absolutely fit into Pep Guardiola's team, right, certainly right now, very easily. Bombing down that left wing, good defensively anyway. Work you ethic. Go, you, doesn't stop running with getting a player like him in. Doesn't stop running. Work ethic. Always goes hundred percent. And he's a blue. Brilliant. Brilliant. What's the club. What more do you want? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Where do we go next, pal? Who's the next one we got coming in? Because they're gonna have to. Uh, gonna have to be good to uh, top of these ones that we go. We seem every time we speak to somebody, we keep the, the, the echelons seem to be rising. I it's mean, great. for me, I, I'm kind of pinching myself at Tommy Booth next week. That that for me is. You know, he won everything and he won everything during that, you know, we're doing well now, but by our other Halicon times that we talk about, you know, the end of the 60s with, with Lee Bell, Summerby, you know, at Oaks, he, he was there, he was right in the middle of it. I mean, 
I think Tommy Booth, honestly, Tom, you and I can maybe speak to him for about five hours next week. Yeah, it's going to be a long one, that pal. I'll probably need lots of pro plus before I go into that. Yeah, drink your Pepsi again. Drink your Pepsi, exactly, pal. It works. It worked. I'm, I'm smiling. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm going, to tr- I'm, I'm going to try and friend request Terry Phelan now because uh, that was absolutely fantastic. And if we can do anything you know, on our page with our 100,000 fans to kind of help him at all, then, you know, I'm, I'm all for it. 100% agree with you. Oh, brilliant. Listen, mate, let's go. Cloud nine. We'll get this live on, it's live now into on Zoom, so we'll get it on yeah. Facebook, get it on YouTube, we'll get it on the podcast as soon as we can. Thanks, everybody, for watching and listening. As always, if you're using an iPhone, please go over to, to Apple iTunes subscribe please leave us a review it does go a long way i absolutely promise you and thanks for everyone that's done that already and if you're on youtube watching this on youtube please subscribe you get loads of notifications about the, the, the pods we do not just with current players previous players but also the, the chats that me and the lads do and it's generally like a couple of lads having a chat about city and it's and it's really enjoyable to listen to i listen yeah you know, it's funny because when i do these i go for a run and i listen to them again just to, just to listen to what people t- actually take on board again, what people, it's like watching a film twice. You can you can't really, you only really notice something the second time you listen to it. So I have to kind of go on my runs and I listen, I listen to these and I love it. It's great. So if you get a chance to do that on, uh, on, uh, on a podcast, guys, please do so. And uh, thanks for everybody for watching and listening. Yeah. And as I always say, city till we die. Can't city. See you later. Uh-oh.